Hello everyone. Today we'll be talking about assignment problems. So let me introduce you to assignment problem. So assignment problem is basically a special class of linear programming problem only uh, because in linear programming problem also we have certain objective and different constraint. So similarly assignment problem also has certain uh, you know, objective to minimize uh, the cost of assignment or minimize the uh, distance, okay? So we'll be talking about those in detail. So assignment problems are also LPP that involves determining the most efficient assignment of people to various projects or to various machines, right? Okay, and or salesperson to different zones or territories or uh, contracts to bidders and so on. So there are many application of assignment problem. So it is often often used to minimize total cost of assignment or most efficient uh, assignment as we did earlier or time of performing the task. Okay, so what will be the minimum time of performing the task? Okay, so one important characteristics of assignment problem is that only one job is assigned to one machine or project. So in transportation problem, basically we have different demand and supply centers, but different supply centers can provide to different demand center. But here the thing is different. You can just assign one job to one particular uh, person, okay? So, or worker. For example, there are three students, A, B, C, and I want to give them three assignments. I have three assignments, but I have, I can just give one assignment to only one student. If I give it to student A, suppose, I can't give it to student B. Similarly, B student is assigned assignment three. He can't be given any other assignment. So here, the most important thing is only one job, one person, okay? Or one worker can be assigned to one machine, okay? So uh, each assignment problem has a matrix associated with it. Okay, and the number in the table, either it indicates the cost or other factors associated with the problem. The most efficient linear programming algorithm is to find optimal solution to an assignment problem is Hungarian method. Um, uh, it is named as Hungarian method because it was basically devised by two uh, mathematicians who were from Hungary. So hence the name Hungarian method and it is also known as Flurs technique. Okay, and uh, as I told you earlier, it, uh, earlier as well, it is uh, assigning each facility to one and only one job so as to optimize the given measures of effectiveness, okay? So when N facilities and N jobs are available and uh, given the effectiveness of each facility for each job. So it will, all these data uh, will be given, will be provided to you, right? Like what is the cost of assignment, how many, jobs are there, how many workers are there, or how many facilities are there, right? So suppose there are N machines or uh, facilities to be assigned to N jobs, okay? And CIJ uh, represent the cost of assigning IS facility to J jobs, okay? So, and here XIJ represent K if assignment has been made or not. XIJ represent the assignment of IS facility to J job. What does it mean? If there's assignment, then your uh, XIJ value will be one. And if there's no assignment, your XIJ value will be zero. Okay, so uh, as we can read it here, if IH facility can be assigned to J job, then the, the value of XIJ will be one, otherwise it will be zero. Okay, you will understand it more clearly, uh, clearly in coming slides. So the objective is to make assignments uh, that minimize the total cost assignment cost or maximize the total associated gain. Okay, so, this is basically the matrix would, would like. There are many facilities, or we can say workers, okay? And there are many jobs, okay? Or machines. The, the uh, assignment can be of any kind. Like if you're assigning workers to different machines or you are there are certain facilities and there are different jobs that we need to do. So how to do it? But here, supply will be one. Why? And demand will also be one because at each job, we just need one facility and vice versa, okay? So, um, it will always be one. Only one assignment can be made each row and in each column, right? So the as thus we can see the assignment problem can be denoted by n into n matrix. There can be n number of facilities. There can be n number of jobs, right? Which continue, uh, which basically, which basically means there can be n factorial possible ways for making uh, making these assignments. So if we list down all these 
possible ways it is very very time consuming method so that is why it is called basically enumeration method so and it becomes very difficult when your n is uh, n value is very large okay for 2 3 4 5 uh, uh, values we can basically deal with this enumeration method otherwise listing all these things become very difficult for example for n uh, equal to 10 we can have around 10 factorial assignments possible arrangement so for each possible arrangement that would be around 3 lakh 620 Sorry, three six is two eight eight hundred. On uh, number types of assignment, possible arrangements. So it will be very cumbersome that you uh, you know you do all possible arrangements and you calculate the values associated and find out where we get the minimum value. So it becomes very hectic for us, very cumbersome. So we want uh, de uh, definitely will not go with such method, such an uh, you know. Uh, listing and then finding out listing you know uh, n factorial number of ways okay so let's study in brief what is the basic difference between transportation and assignment assignment problem is basically uh, a type of transportation problem only okay but here supply at source may be any positive quantity but here supply is only one like we uh, basically uh, discussed in our last slide okay and here demand at any destination may be any positive quantity here demand will also be one that only one job uh, per person or per facility or one or more source to any number of destination but here only one source to only one destination okay so as we we have discussed uh, third point earlier as well okay so as i told you uh, uh, it is a lpp linear programming problem so we can have various methods like compute and uh, complete enumeration method Uh, we discuss listing and then finding out various arrangement. Simplex method, uh, which again will be very cumbersome. You'll you'll have to do lot many iteration. Then transportation method, definitely you can use transportation method. But uh, you know, if you remember, the condition for degeneracy in transportation problem is m plus n minus one should be equal to number of allocated cells. Suppose there's a matrix four um, uh, into four matrix of uh, assignment problem. And uh, there will be possible four assignments, right? So number of allocation would be four only. So when we talk, uh, 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 you know, do this degeneracy check where m represent number of rows, that would be four plus m minus one. Okay, so it will be seven. But we have only four allocated cells, so there can be problem of degeneracy. So we need to avoid that because the, uh, if we solve using that method, it will be again very long process. Okay. so we we'll go will go with hungarian method okay which is a very simple method to do the assignments let's see how it works and also there are few requirements uh, of assignment problem like i told you it should be an n to n matrix that number of rows and number of columns should be equal if it is not equal we need to make it equal that is called your unbalanced uh, assignment problem okay so in that particular case you will add dummy row or column uh, as the case may be suppose if you have around three row, uh, rows and four columns okay so you need to add one dummy row here to make it four into four matrix and vice versa if you have four rows you know four workers and you have only three machines then to solve the problem using hungarian method you need to add one dummy column okay so And that is why we have to create a table of equal dimension. This dummy row or column is non-existent, hence value can be entered as zeros. Okay, we can enter zero values in that particular dummy row or column. So this is a problem to you know to understand clearly how this Hungarian method is applied, right? So we can see a company has a five job to be done by five workers. Each workers are assigned to one and only one job. Okay, that is prerequisite for assignment problem. and number of hours each worker takes to complete a job is given under this table uh, so you can see uh, like uh, this 28 represent that worker one take 28 hours to complete job 1 27 hours to complete j2 likewise you know 20 uh, worker four takes around 25 hours to complete job j3 27 to j5 so this is basically the values given in the table okay so step one is to see the uh let's read the step one first find the minimum element in each row and subtract it from the all the elements of that particular row so you see here 
what is the minimum value in row one? You can see clearly it is 24. So we will subtract 20 from, from each of the element of row one. And similarly, we'll go to row two and we'll see the least uh, minimum value is 23. So uh, we will uh, subtract 23 from each and every element of row two. And similarly, we'll identify 18 is the minimum value in row three. So we'll uh, basically uh, subtract 18 from each element of row three. Okay, so you can see here and likewise each and for each row you will repeat this step. Okay, so suppose you can see uh, we'll, we'll make our next table which will be representing 28 minus 24, 27 minus 24. So our new table uh, for each step you need to uh, draw a new table, right? And put values in that. So here you can see we have new values. Now, after subtraction in our new table, 4, 3, 0, 11, 14, 3, 1, 0, 9, 16, 0, 2, 4, 12, 14, 3, 6, 1, 0, 3, 1, 3, 0, 12, 8. Okay, so step one is done. Now for step two, you have to repeat same process for columns. Okay, column wise, now you'll start. So you'll start from column one. So in column one, you see what is our minimum value here? It is zero. So it will be four minus zero, three minus zero. Values will remain same. Then you'll move to column two. So here you see the minimum value is one. So what will you do? You will subtract one from each element of this particular column. When you will be uh, putting values in new table. Okay, similarly, J3, we have minimum value zero. So it will remain same. Then J4 again, we can see we have one zero here. That is your minimum value. Okay, then it will sim remain same. But in column five, you see there's no zero. So again, you have to check what is your minimum value. Here it is three. So you will subtract three from each element of J5. So your new, new table would be this after column subtraction. So you can see all the values. So after that, you know, in step three, we do the allocation. And remember, because we have subtracted the minimum value, so definitely there will be zeros in each row and each column now, okay? So step three. So step three, we again start from first row. And if there's exact one, exactly one zero in that particular row, then we make the assignment and cancel out all zeros in that particular column and then draw a vertical line. Okay, let me show you how. Okay, so suppose this was our table. Now you see in first row, we have exactly one zero, that is this one. So uh, assignment we represent by the square that we have made an assignment. What does it mean that we are assigning B2, oh, sorry, worker one, you, these are workers, okay. Worker one to M3, okay, worker one to M3. So you are assigning worker one to M3. This represent this thing, okay. So now you see, now you have made assignment in this row, then you have to check in that particular column. If there are more zeros, you just cross it, okay? So there are two more zeros, so you just cross it and draw this line, vertical line, remember vertical line. Now you'll come, go to row two, you see there's exactly one zero, row two. So you, you can easily make the assignment, okay? And you'll check vertically, no zeros. So you'll just cross the line. Similarly, then you'll move to row three. You'll see there is only one zero. So you'll make the allocation. There are no other zeros in this particular column. And you'll draw the vertical line. Now you'll come to row four. Now you see there are two zeros. One is this, one is this. So you will leave it as it is. You won't do anything. Now you'll move to row three, five. Again, there's no zeros, so no allocation. Now, after completing all the rows, we'll move to columns. So in first column, no allocation, uh, allocation is already done. So no need, similarly for second, third. Now you come to fourth column. You see there's exactly one zero, okay? And in column, you uh, you know cancel out zeros horizontally. So you see there's one zero. So you'll just cross it and then you'll draw the horizontal line at it is, as it is your column assignment, column-wise assignment, okay? So it will become like this, okay? I hope the step is clear to you all. Okay, then what we will do, now we'll check if I have, uh, in uh, many problems, you will get, a, uh, you know, optimal solution here as well. Like if you have done all the assignment here at this step, you don't need to move to next step. But here you will check if uh, we have done all the assignments, then we'll see there are five workers and five jobs, but we have made only four assignments, as you can count these lines, which are covering all the zeros. 
okay one two three four so there are four uh, lines but uh, we have done only um we need five assignments but we have done four so this is not the optimal solution so to find out the optimal solution what you do or you just look at all those elements which are not covered by these lines so you can see 11 11 9 13 12 11 12 5 okay so then you pick the minimum value from the uncovered cells so what we can see here 5 is the minimum value okay so uh, after identifying this minimum value you have to do two things you have to subtract this 5 from, subtract this 5 from each uncovered values okay for each of the uncovered values you will do the minus 5 okay and and then you have to add it add it as well so where should we add it listen carefully we have to look at the intersection where two where two lines are intersecting okay so here this is intersecting here this is intersecting here the this lines are intersecting so here you we will add this five that value you have identified which is minimum to all these elements like five plus three five plus five okay and one plus five and then you will draw uh, then you will draw a new table where you will write the new values so the covered values will remain the same okay uncovered cells will be 11 minus the minimum number like that and uh, and the values and in, in at the intersection point would be uh, 3 plus 5 5 plus 5 1 plus 5 etc okay so so let's see a new table okay so you can see this is how our new table values are written okay 6 11 minus 5 then eight points at intersection so now this is our new allocation new table okay now after doing this operation we'll again do the allocation right so we will do the allocations now let's see now look at first row only one zero do the allocation check zeros vertically here we have two zeros so just cross it and draw a line right then we'll move to row two right we have one zero no other zeros here so we'll just draw the line then you move to row three we have exactly one zero no other zeros so just draw the line then we move to row four two zeros no allocation row five only one zero now okay so you do this and you see in this particular column any more zeros yes so just cross it over and draw the line right and now um rows uh we have done row wise allocation now we'll go to column wise column one already done two done three done now look at column four we do we have exactly one zero yes we have so we'll do the allocation and we'll see there are no zeros we'll just draw the horizontal line okay so now you'll see we have done the five allocation five assignment we have five lines covering the all so this is the optimal solution what is the optimal solution worker one is assigned to j3 worker two is assigned to j2 worker three to j1 worker four to j4 and worker five to j5 so you can see it here how allocations are done and how you have uh, got these values these are your values which are given in your original table Right, this was your original table, right? So, suppose worker three you have assigned to J1, so you have taken this value, right? So, this is basically a time taken. So, from here, we'll take these values like uh, worker three takes 18 hours to complete J1, worker two takes 24 hours to complete J2, worker one 24 to J3, 24 uh, to J4, and worker five 36 hours to complete J5. So if you need to calculate the total time taken by all the workers, you can just add them up and this will be your answer. Okay, so optimal solution is unique here. Okay, because no zeros is left. Okay, so that's all. Thank you, everyone.